cousins become castaways and sweet home Alabamas each other for years. There's a mysterious island. Hello, Popcorn Recap here. Today we'll talk about a 1980 adventure romance movie called The Blue Lagoon. Before we start, be sure to like the video, drop a comment and subscribe to the channel if you dig this summary. The movie begins with a family sailing towards San Francisco. Arthur calls his son Richard and niece Emmeline after seeing them play at the dangerous part of the ship. Shortly after that, Em asks about her parents and if they are coming back. Arthur tells the girl that her parents are in heaven and that she will meet them someday. Sometime later, Richard and Em enter Patty's room while he is busy cooking in the kitchen. Richard finds some lewds and Em joins him to drool over the photos. Patty catches the children in the act and punishes them. The punishment gets interrupted after a fire breaks out in the ship. As the fire alarms sound, people begin to panic. Patty takes the children and boards a lifeboat with them. Throughout the confusion, Richard and Em get separated from Arthur. Together with Patty, they find themselves stranded with no food and water in the middle of the ocean. One morning, Em wakes up and sees an island in the distance. She tells Patty and Richard about it and they both get excited. Patty quickly sails the boat towards the island and wastes no time exploring it when they arrive. The three castaways find food to eat and fresh water to drink. While Patty and Richard play by the river, Em finds a barrel full of rum. She tells Patty about it and he happily inspects the goods. Soon after that, Richard joins them and shows a human skull to Patty, so they leave the place in a hurry. While keeping an eye out for boats, Em places several berries in her mouth. Patty makes her spit the berries and tells her that they are poisonous. The three then take shelter near the shoreline and hope to be rescued one day. As time passes by, the three castaways remain on the island without signs of being rescued. Patty teaches the children skills they need to survive on the island. One night, Patty hears strange noises coming from the other side of the island. In the morning, Patty tracks the area where the sound was coming from and finds a rock with meat placed on it. Realizing that something dangerous happened in the area, he quickly runs back to shore. Later that night, he makes the two children promise that they will never visit that side of the island. Patty gets drunk one night after splurging on too much rum. He dances with the children by the fire pit and eventually falls asleep. When he wakes up the next day, he takes his rum barrel and goes for a morning swim. Nothing like a good morning exercise to shake off a hangover. Eh. When the children wake up, they look for Patty and see him lying at the distant beach. They take the boat and go to him, but learn that he is already dead. Terrified of what happened to their father figure, Em tells Richard they should leave. The two children pack all their belongings on the boat and look for another island to settle in. Using the skills that Patty taught them, the children survive by themselves. Time passes by and the two eventually grow up into young adults. After years of living on the island, Richard and Emmeline have built their own home. They spend most of their time collecting food and building things that make their island life more convenient. Physically, the two have grown, but they're both still innocent children at heart. That is evident in their confusion about the many changes happening inside and outside their bodies. One day, while Emma is swimming, she notices blood in the water and screams for Richard. Before he arrives, Em discovers that the blood is coming from her body. She is on her first period and knows nothing about it. When Richard arrives and tries to help her, she tells him to leave. Good thing there were no sharks nearby. Richard asks her about the bleeding later and she tells him that she knows nothing. Richard then asks if he can inspect her body for cuts that caused the bleeding, but she denies the request. Richard becomes angry at Em for keeping secrets from him and leaves her alone. Since she's attracted to him, Em can't keep her eyes off Richard. He notices this and wonders if she's sick. Richard also tells Em not to give whatever sickness she has to him. Too late, you already have it, and it's called Sweet Home Alabama. A few nights later, Richard and Em hear strange drumming sounds. The two try to figure out who's making this sound. Em then asks what they'll do if the one making the sounds comes to hurt them. Richard says he'll spear the man and kill him, if that ever happens. 
One evening, Richard sees Emmeline bathing by the ocean. He gets mesmerized by her beauty and curves. Unable to resist the opportunity to get closer to his cousin, he joins her for a glowing swim. She happily welcomes him and the two enjoy each other's company that evening. Mmm, awkward. The next day, M goes to the other side of the island to look for the place where the drumming sounds were coming from. After a short trek, she finds a giant rock sculpture. She then sees blood coming out of it and gets terrified. Maybe it's having a period too. Mm, but maybe not. But it's possible, right? Uh, moving on. The scared M runs back to their house and tell Richard what happened. She believes that the sculpture is God and they should do something about it. Richard gets angry and warns her not to visit that place again. One night after that, Em has a nightmare about Richard drowning in the sea after eating the poisonous red berries. When she wakes up, she makes Richard promise to never leave her. After he makes the promise, the two kiss each other. Mm. Maybe they're very distant cousins, like fifth cousin, once removed or something. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> Richard then tries to score, but M denies him. And willing to accept defeat, Richard tries touching M while she sleeps. She wakes up and tells him to go away. Mm -hmm. Better luck next time, bro. Disappointed with how she treated him, Richard ignores M for the next few days. One sunny day, Richard sees a ship sailing near their island. He runs back to their house as quickly as possible, hoping to light their signal fire on time. While that happens, M sees the ship too, but she doesn't bother to light the fire. When Richard arrives and learns that M did nothing, he gets furious at her. He decides to leave her behind and sail to San Francisco by himself with the ship he made. Unfortunately, Richard's flimsy boat doesn't travel that far, and he swims back to shore defeated. M laughs at her plunder and says that the island is now their home. She also reveals that she knows he's been playing with his man rod lately. Angry at M for making fun and spying on him, Richard throws a coconut her way. I'm sure he wanted M to throw her coconuts his way too. <laughs> wink wink. After some back and forth mockery, the two end up fighting seriously. Richard goes back home and starts throwing M's belongings outside. He claims that he's the one that built the house, so he has the right to choose who lives in it. In the end, M gets forced to take shelter in the nearby rock formation. Damn, the girl is in the doghouse for once. The next day, M steps on a rockfish while foraging for food. Richard doesn't see M that day, so he checks up on her and learns that she's weakened due to the rockfish's poison. He then takes her to the rock sculpture as she requested. Richard carries Am through the forest and to the sculpture's location. Once there, he puts her down on the sculpture's altar and begins praying for her recovery. When M recovers a few moments later, he no longer hesitates to express his feelings toward her. Richard helps M to go back to shore and they start getting romantically closer to each other. Their romance eventually reaches a boiling point and they finally get intimate. As time flies, the two become happier and no longer hold back their intimacy. Loneliness does amazing things, you know. One morning, Richard sees M vomiting near the ocean. When he tries to get intimate with her that night, she declines. M then says that it hurts when they try to do it and she doesn't know why. She tells Richard to feel her stomach because something is moving inside it. Richard places his hand on her belly and realizes she's telling the truth. They are both clueless about what's happening and if M is okay. This is why it's important to have health education classes, especially in remote deserted islands. Several months pass and Richard hears the drumming noises again. He musters the courage to investigate and discovers a group of savages. After observing their ritual, Richard gets terrified after seeing them sacrifice one of their own to their deity. Scared of the danger in front of him, Richard quickly runs back to their house. Once there, he hears them screaming in pain. She is going into labor and, with Richard's help, gives birth to a boy. 
Despite an extreme lack of knowledge about pregnancy, the two managed to deliver their baby. Sometime later, the two try feeding the baby with fruits and water. They fail miserably and wonder what is wrong with the child. Fortunately, Em's maternal instincts kick in and she unknowingly breastfeeds the baby. Have these two never been exposed to pets before? After that, Richard tells M about the savages and the ritual he saw. Since they are isolated from the outside world, the two are confused about why people hurt each other. Richard then says that whatever happens, he will protect their home. Time passes again and the baby grows up. They name the baby boy Paddy and it's to honor the man that saved them. He even learns to swim in the ocean with his parents. Wow, that kid can swim better than me. I can't swim at all, by the way. The family now lives on the island happily and spends most of their time playing together. One day, they see a ship in the distance. Unbeknownst to them, it belongs to Richard's father, Arthur. It seems he's been searching for his son and niece all these years. The two decide not to bother signaling the ship because they agree that the island is now their home. Meanwhile, Arthur uses a telescope to have a closer view of the mud-covered Richard and M. Unfortunately, the mud makes it difficult to determine who they are, so Arthur assumes it's not them. His ship continues to sail away from the island after that. He didn't think to stop by anyway and ask if they've seen the kids. Several days after that, M decides to visit the island where they lived with Patty. Richard takes her there, along with the baby. While Richard looks for bananas, M finds their old stuff and starts reminiscing. M spaces out and fails to notice Patty bringing poisonous red berries to their boat. While waiting in the boat for Richard to return, M falls asleep. When she wakes up, they have drifted away from the shore. M calls out to Richard and he swims towards the boat. Unfortunately, a shark appears and chases Richard. Perfect time to have your period and throws the blood elsewhere to destruct the shark. M throws their last remaining ore at the shark to buy enough time for Richard. Realizing that the currents are driving them away from the island, they try paddling with their hands, but it doesn't work. Without any means to paddle, the family slowly drifts into the ocean. After several days of drifting, Richard and M wake up and discover that Patty is eating the poisonous berries. A worried M tries keeping the baby awake, but she fails. Realizing that there is no hope left, Richard and Emmeline also eat the berries. Soon after that, they both lose consciousness while embracing the baby and each other. Sometime later, one of Arthur's sailors spots the lifeboat. They take their ship to have a closer look. When they reach the vessel later, Arthur sees Richard, Emmeline and baby Patty. He asks if they are dead and a sailor says they are simply sleeping. It turns out that the berries aren't poisonous after all and only put people to sleep. The movie ends after Arthur's sailor team boards the lifeboat to rescue Richard, Emmeline and baby Patty. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.